Hi, Jeff here, and we're gonna make a fast compost. I've got a challenge on to do a 12 to 14 day compost, and that's about all the time I've got left in the country. So we're gonna try and take it through a process in front of you, and you're gonna see it go through a quick turn stage. We're gonna turn it almost every day, probably take the weekend off, but every day of the week, we're gonna turn it for at least 10 to 12 days, maybe 14 days, and end up with a real good product. I'm sitting on wood chip, our new wood chipper run by our tractor, is uh, producing some great material. It's mostly the, the sticks left over after the goats have chewed off all the forage, but there's a bit of leaf here, a bit of ice cream bean, nice nitrogen, a lot of bamboo, and a real mixture of sticks. Then here I've just got weeds off the paddock. It's the green material. You can see it's green in there. That's just a whole mixture of grass and weeds. Nice combination, actually. And then over here, our tow and collect has delivered this wonderful paddock manure, which is mostly horse, but some cow. So there's our manure, here's our brown, and there's our green, and we're gonna get turning and combine this all together and start a fast compost heap. Now, my assistants here are, is Ian from Canada and Juan from Argentina. So we've got some international muscle on the scene and we're gonna now get the pitchforks, rakes, and uh, put it together. Let's go, boys. All right, choose your weapon. Just chuck it into that grass in the middle where your pitchfork is. Uh, equal amounts of each, really. Yeah, I'll go on the manure. Give me the shitty stuff, that's right. Well, I was going here. So go over there. <laughs> I'll go one. You go on the green over there. Yeah, and we'll do the classic green brown manure. There's plenty of material here to use. It's been raining, so this stuff's quite wet already. Right, immediately, boys, I'm going to ask for a slow up because I'm going to put an interesting component in there one minute. So inoculums are an interesting part of compost and uh, something that's rich and it's going to break down in an interesting way. And I have a dead chicken, right? This chicken died today, right? Don't know why. Little bantam, just the right size to go in the middle of the compost. A couple of ice cream bean pods can join her and a litre or two of worm castings at the worm farm. That's a nice inoculum. Okay, cover her up, boys. We're on our way. Okay, just give me a little bit of a crater on the top there again. Like, hook me out a bit of a crater hole. Here's a classic inoculum. This is comfrey, one of the great herbs of the world, definitely in the top 10. Knit bone sometimes called, but it, it's so full of minerals. It actually is an inoculum. Now, inoculums add a sort of kick to the compost startup. There's so much beneficial bacteria that breaks down dead animals, worm castings, old compost, urine. You can pee on it if you like regularly, add in moisture and high nitrogen. Or things like comfrey, nettles, yarrow, they're all inoculum, fish. So that's a great one. We're right next to a permaculture food garden, so I've got plenty of comfrey there. Let's tuck a bit of comfrey in. It will go very close to the chicken and the worm castings, and then we'll just keep covering now. And we're on our way. We've inoculated, we've got a sort of activator. It's an activator, activates the system, gets it fired up. Now we're gonna carry on with the brown, green, and manure. Now, we need a cubic meter so you need at least a cubic meter to get this thing kicked up because um, you can't cook a cake with a candle. You've got to get it up to a temperature and that means a certain amount of volume. And that's just about up to my armpit when I stand up straight. It's about here, 1.5 meters high in a gravity fall pile. So we've got to aim for that kind of volume and we've got plenty of material here. So we're going to get there. And we've got some good wood chip here. Great mixture of material in the wood chip. And that's 
going to get us a lot of fungal dominance. We've got a really fungal dominated compost here. Great for fruit trees. Great for anything, but can lean towards fruit trees with a fungal dominance. So I'm going to come around and grab the red stuff over there. Yeah, you can put some of that in, add a bit of diversity. Got some bamboo here. Yeah, that's kind of stringy, that bamboo, but we'll take a risk on it. You've got to have a large surface area on the materials that are slow to break down like carbon. Otherwise they won't fully break down. Now normally we'd be wetting this all the time. The truth is our water's not working at the moment. <laughs> and the gravity, the wonderful gravity water system of Zaytuna Farm is like just failed at the moment and they're just switching it back on. So it's pretty wet because it rained last night. This material wasn't covered up. So it's, it won't take a lot to wet it. But if you'd start with really dry material, you want to be wetting it all the time as you're building. It's quite hard to get it wet enough normally. Probably the water signal. Hello, Sam Parker Davis. Hey, Jeffy. Going? Going? In case that the lines aren't. So you're filling the tank up. I've got open lines here. You can push it through. Yeah, closing the tank. Okay. We'll be expecting water shortly. See you in a bit. All right. The benefit of community. People can do extra work for you at the other end of the farm. Sam's got the water coming. This is going to be a nice heat. The wood chips got a very nice consistency. I say we'd be up the temperature very quick on this one. It's going to be so hot that it's uncomfortable to stick your hand in it. At least on early days, like two or three turns in, if we're going to turn every day five days a week. It's going to be day three, day two, day three. It's got to start getting some serious temperature. Nearly there, pretty close. Just keep knocking the top off a little bit and building up on it. That broadens the base, just knocking the top off. You just get a bit of intu intuition about it after you've made enough of them. It's sort of master chef in the compost really. By the time we get up to height now, we're there. We've got a good cubic meter in volume and you need that mass to get up the heat. I arrived uh, two weeks ago. Yeah. Oh, it's, uh, it's your first compost though, isn't it? It is my first compost, yeah. yeah. But right. one, it's an initiation of fire, mm -hmm. literally. This is a slow fire. It doesn't lose any volume. The only way you can burn the forest without losing volume. Okay. So this will be our baby for the next. Yeah. Maybe. You'll be seeing this move along. Not a few weeks, it's just like less than two weeks. It's got to be done in less than two weeks. I'm going to leave that there a minute. And we're going to just keep building up a bit, bit more on top. Mainly from over here, guys. Take this one, take this stuff. Cap the whole thing with that if we can.
So this one heap will fertilize my garden here for two months while I'm overseas and I'll come back to a harvest. So this material is all the fertilizer I need to get a bumper harvest in two months time. And it'll be doing most of the work actually. It'll be doing most of all the growing, holding the fertility together and getting a big early winter crop in because we're going into winter soon. Now we grab the tarp and the, and the blocks and, and cover her up. Yeah, bring it over. Doesn't matter which side goes up. Doesn't matter. And just weigh it down so it doesn't blow off in the night. Yeah. So we'll leave our tools on top of it because tomorrow morning, well, it's late afternoon now, early evening almost. Tomorrow morning we'll have a look and see if we've got any temperature moving up. We'll get an idea then whether we need a bit more moisture or we've got it a bit too wet or we've got nitrogen content right, but I'm pretty sure we have. So we'll check it tomorrow morning and see if there's warmth building. And we'll turn it this time tomorrow afternoon. So here we are, day two. We've actually got some weeds from gardening. And I'm just going to put them at the bottom of the pile to add a little bit of extra green. This material will cook them pretty quick. Now it's just a little bit of additive. You can cheat. You can add a little bit along the way if you know how to do it. So just some extra greens. And we're going to turn the pile on top of those. And here we go, day two, starting up. And we've got Ian and Juan going to help us as well. Get the job done a bit quicker. I can... Ah, there's already heat. I can tell there's heat there. Ideally, we turn the outside to the inside. That's the perfect thing. We peel the outside and turn it to the inside. That's perfect. And yeah, look, there's a little bit of steam there straight away. So if you don't want to strain your back doing this, you can just push in, lever, move forward to where the weight is, and just stand up. And then when you stand up, you lift this end and twist, and you've got a straight back during that whole operation. So you just do it again, you go in, lever to loosen it, move forward, bend the knee, stand up with a straight arm and twist. And the great thing with a pitchfork is you can do it in both directions. So you can change hands. This is for your compost yoga early in the morning, right? This is meaningful yoga, right? So you stand forward, you go like that, and you do it the other way around. That's quite okay to do it right-handed or left-handed. So if I'm going this side, you're going to have to go that way. Bend, break the material out, stand up, and just twist like that. And you can do it all day. So, uh, you're not doing this. That with weight on it, you're putting pressure on the lower back. And you only strain that a few times in a lifetime before you regret it. And it becomes a weak point. So uh, in like that, loosen it, step forward, stand up, twist. In, out, stand up, twist. 
Uh, you can do it all day. Same with shoveling, it's the same action. Use the lever it, stand up, twist. Straight arm, use the leg, stand up, twist. I think it's a fraction dry. Now as we get down a bit lower we're going to get close to that activator which is uh, comfrey in the top area and a dead chicken at the bottom and uh, it's not going to be in a very friendly state by the time we get there because it only went in last night so we're going to have to get ready to tuck it into a hole Ah, there's a, a little bit of a indicator, white feathers. Let's get a bit of a hole here, open up an area to drop them in. So it goes down out of, uh, out of sight but out of smell as well. It must be just pretty close now. Please don't put them, yeah, don't put Ah, there we are. There's a bit there. It's only just hanging together because it's quite cooked already. What a pungent aroma. And quite quickly it just breaks down the skeleton and disappears. And uh, it's all just little components of the original animal. much better mix now. Now we've done this, there's a lot more of a mix in the materials. It's going to end up with a more uniform colour after this turn. And that's going to repeat, it's going to get more and more uniform in colour and texture over the few turns.
Sí, la, la estoy haciendo muy alta. Here we go. We've turned it. It's uh, hasn't lost any volume. Might have actually gained a bit because I think we've included a few things. And um, we'll see how it goes tomorrow. Okay, this is it. This is the end of our 10 days. We started on a Thursday. We turned on a Friday and we had a Saturday and Sunday off. We turned Monday to Friday, had a Saturday to Sunday off and we turned Monday through to Thursday. It's Thursday evening. This is it, uncover it guys. Let's have a look. We've got one more turn. Now, I have to finish today because tomorrow I go overseas and I've got four countries to do in 55 days. A lot of projects, consultancy, research, and a bit of teaching. So I'm gonna go to Oman and visit Salala. Look, really looking forward to that. Then I'm going to Saudi Arabia, some interesting work to do there. And then Jordan, visit the project there, a lot of very interesting events to record there. And then to Hungary, where I'm teaching with Istafan, one of our great team players and teachers. So first for me in Hungary, I'm going to report in on all of that. Some beautiful videos coming and some interesting stuff. But right now, let's get into this beautiful thing. It's a lot darker. Um, it's fine. It's pretty rough, actually. It's still hot. We put a real hot mix together. Let's get turning, guys. Let's put it over here. Um, I don't think it's really fine compost. There's so much wood chip in it. We've got our new wood chipper um, and we've really played with it. We've got our goat manure, cow manure, chicken manure, but mostly we've got horse manure. Um, so a large amount of horse manure came in with our poo picker. We've still got temperature, you can see it, but it's dark, it's chunky. If you sieved it, I think it'd be pretty good compost actually for even potting mix, but right now it's like a super fertilizer. And um, we haven't lost any volume. It looks exactly the same as when we started. Um, and it'd be a fantastic fertilizer. There'd be a lot of beneficial organisms in here. If you put it on the soil in the garden, they're gonna spread all the way through the system and extend out um, into the soil, through the fruit trees and the vegetables. And those organisms that go to work, the growers really high quality, nutrient dense food. That's the idea. This is going on our garden while I'm away. And when I come back, 
in about two months, 55 days or so, this will be growing food. And we'll report in on that food and show you what it's done as fertilizer. Now, it's definitely a bit chunky, a bit woody, and it's definitely a bit hot, uh, but not too hot, but it's refused to cool down. A lot of the goat forage branches and um, sticks are legume trees. So there may be residual nitrogen held up in the, in the wood chip. I like it, I like the look of it. It's, it's gonna be particularly good on woody species, I think, but I think it will be fine in the garden. Those organisms will spread through the soil. They will partner up with the organisms that are there and um, we'll definitely see the result. Okay. Is it getting harder to turn because it's falling through the pitchforks? When we get to the bottom of the pile, the three prongs now getting. Yeah, some of the, we've got a four prong pitchfork. You can have a five, but we've got a four and a three and the three starts to find it hard to hold onto because it just falls through. It's getting finer, it's getting darker, should be getting cooler, still holding a lot of heat. Um, it's something that, I'm impressed with it, actually. I think it's quite interesting looking stuff. Anybody could do this. This is the idea. We want to show you that you can make your own fertilizer and, and increase the life in the soil, which increases the potential nutrient in all your food. So we need to help people understand that one of the keys to sustainable systems is to develop better soil, actually produce more soil and improve the quality of soil. So the life in this will really benefit a system anywhere. And you can do this anywhere. It doesn't matter what climate. So that's the idea of showing this. And we're going to show many variations of compost now. We're going to show different variations of components, mainly because we've got these little bits of machinery that we've uh, attached to a tractor to save us work and um, show different systems working of soil creation. Now we have cheated because when you are a master of systems, you're allowed to cheat, you get away with it. We have added a couple of pigeons that got strangled by snakes. They've gone in as inoculant along the journey instead of just at the beginning. And we put some pigeon manure because we snake proofed the pigeon loft and gathered some pigeon manure and surplus grain that had fallen through the pigeon loft. A lot of that was wheat. So that added a little bit of a heat kick but that's not the only thing. So one of the, yeah, a little bit of manure here. That's, that's some of the pigeon manure. It's quite a warm lump now. So that's, pigeon manure is pretty interesting stuff. So that's still hanging about a bit. Um, one thing you could definitely do is, is spread this on a new garden and grow cover crop into it with the soil and the nutrient would spread with the cover crop action, the roots of the cover crop would support the organisms in this. So you can still see little light, lighter specks of wood chip. They're pretty soft, actually. And um, most of it's a dark color. Most of it's a really nice dark brown. And I'd say if we actually did about two or three more turns, it would only be the long sticks, the stringy stuff that would be left over. Now, Chico, what are you going to do with this when you get back to China after Canberra? You're going to the Australian capital to sort of corrupt people, I suppose. And then, then you're going back to China, right? Yeah. yeah. Are, you going to, are you going to go back into traditional composting? And... Yeah, I'm going to teach more and more people in China ah, yeah. to make this kind of compost. Right. Well, it's very, it was very traditional a hundred and so years ago. Yeah, yeah. Chinese right. villages were renowned for being extremely clean because everything was composted and there was only organics to be left around. So they were never left around. Yeah. Prized. Do you know what the, 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 the most prized component of a compost was a hundred and fifty years ago in China? 
We also use like manure. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you use even human manure. Yeah, we use yeah. human manure. But there was one prized possession to, to add as a um, as an activator. And oh. it was a kitchen, a, a farmhouse kitchen floor, and these were earth floors that was a hundred years old. Oh. And every a hundred years or so they would pickaxe up and dig up the the, the, chick, the the kitchen floor in a farmhouse it had all these little spilled bits of food and different things in it and they would powder that up and use that as an inoculum 100 year old uh, earth floor from a farmhouse kitchen now I haven't got any of that maybe, maybe you could organise it for me <laughs> no? I don't think I can no? find such things you might find one now and again eh? yeah, yeah. I'll have a look yeah. yeah but we used to like our kitchen is like uh, wood fire kitchen. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, famous for the Kang, the wood fired bed base. Yeah, yeah it's like a, a it's like a thermal mass stove under thermal mass heater bed base. So you cook your meal, and then the chimney smoke heats the bed base, and then you get yeah. into a cozy bed. Yeah. Heats the thermal mass of the body. Good yeah, stuff. Now it's starting to fall through. It's coming through. A little bit. Yeah, the bamboo's a bit stringy when it went through, that, that some of the bamboo's a bit stringy still, but otherwise it's fine. I reckon it's rocket fuel. Oh, here's a bit of pigeon coming. That pigeon has been very resistive to breaking down. Don't know why. Like four, four or five days? Four or five turns, yeah. It does need look cooked now. It, it's definitely a cooked, cooked meat. They're definitely red. I've got to tell the dog to back up. Yeah, but that's, well, we'll cover it up. That pigeon will finally be cooked. Can you flatten this out a little? Yeah, leave the, leave the pigeon in the middle. Put that pigeon back in the middle, go on. Hold on. It just smells like earth. Do you think it's good? Or... It's surprisingly not bad. <laughs> <laughs> I would, yeah, I'd say it is kind of good. It does. Yeah, it's just. It doesn't smell like, like manure. Smells like yeah, a bit earthy and uh, almost like grass. Like cooked grass. Cooked grass. That's a good way to describe it. Let's have a look down there on the Put fine material. In. Yeah, what's stuck in your in, in the, uh, the pores and the fingerprints of your hand? That's the real compost, colloidal material. It's that fine. It actually stains your hand, sticks in the fingerprints. That's the real gear there. And when we pull back and look at the pile, it's a bit chunkier than that, but there's lots of material still there for the organisms to feed on. Excellent. It's a beautiful looking pile. <laughs> 